Imagine if Derek Zoolander desperately wanted to make a movie about Bigfoot. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that movie exists. <laughs> and it might not be made by Derek Zoolander, but it's made by someone very similar. He's dumb as a stump, thinks he's the most attractive guy on Earth, and his only goal in life is to get with as many girls as he can. Not just any girls, mind you. Dimes, as he calls them. If you're not familiar with what that means, uh, it's basically like a 10 out of 10. A really good looking girl. That's, that's his, uh, his goal. To, is to get with as many of those people as possible. Like imagine a dude from Baywatch. Like a big hulking guy from Baywatch. He just wants to have sex all the time. That's why he's alive. It's just, I just really want to have sex all the time with as many women as possible. That's, that's my goal. It's like, there's nothing going on up here except boner. Girl, put boner in. Find girl, put boner in girl. That is what I do. That is my function. And then he wakes up one day and he's like, you know what? I'm not that fulfilled in life. Did you ever think that maybe there's more to life than being really, really, really ridiculously good looking? Let me make a fucking movie about Bigfoot. <laughs> Oh God. Swamp Ape is a bad movie made by an extremely terrible YouTuber. Let me introduce you to Jeff Ward. Jeff is a special person that didn't give up on his dream to be famous. Is he famous? Not really, but that isn't the point. Jeff has done it all. TV commercials, bodybuilding, stand-up comedy, directing, writing, acting, and even objectifying women. I wouldn't be surprised if Jeff's best friend was a mirror. And I find his name very fitting with the My Name Jeff meme. Because... <laughs> Do I even have to explain myself here? Unfortunately for Jeff, he is abysmal at everything he tries to do. Uh, except maybe objectifying women. Some may consider Jeff to be somewhat of a professional at objectifying women. I consider him to be kind of a monster. You'd probably expect me to be referring to one of the big scary types, right? Because he's big and muscly. But no. Jeff is one of those creepy, slimy types that will do anything in his power to get into a girl's pants. But hey, everyone loves a good monster story, whether it be about the abominable snowman, the Loch Ness Monster, the Wendigo, or the Mothman. They each offer very unique scares and interesting backstories while grounding these backstories in the tangible world. Jeff being Jeff, he decided to go with the lamest of all of these folklore monsters. I mean, Bigfoot, he's just what? He's just like a bear, right? He's just like a, a human, a fuzzy human, a big one. I mean, if you put a bear on its hind legs, you got Bigfoot. And to think that some people out there actually believe that this thing exists. It blows my fucking mind. I don't... How? It doesn't make any sense to me. You couldn't possibly believe that it's just a seven foot tall guy in like a fuzzy costume. You know furries exist, right guys? And some of those furries might be big motherfuckers. But what happens when you get a D-list director like Jeff deciding to make a movie you know, his own little spin-off of one of these monsters. Well, you get the movie Swamp Ape. After reading Jeff's brief bio on IMDb, I found that not only is he a writer and a director, he's a stand-up comedian. And it's bad. Man, is it bad. I, gotta, uh, I know a guy who can get me on the show Fear Factor. You know that show? I'm thinking about doing it, but all my friends are like, how are you gonna eat that stuff? My girlfriend's Vietnamese. I mean, we eat that stuff all the time. <laughs> I also found his acting demo reel. It was uploaded around the same time. Drop the gun, Carol. Why? I mean it, Carol. Drop it or I'll plug you right now. What's going on, Mike? I gotta kill you. I'm sorry. She told me to. I used to spend 40 minutes a day in the gym working my abs. Now I can work my entire midsection in just three minutes a day. I mean, it kind of makes sense now why he decided to try and make his own movie company. I don't want to fight her. I love her. Because nobody can take this guy seriously. And I found his YouTube channel. It's named Holly Ward. It's quite similar to the name that Logan Paul gave his audience. You know, Logang. You take two words and squash them together to make like a shitty Frankenstein name and a failed attempt to cleverly brand yourself. 
Yeah. So on the Hollywood channel, Jeff uploads episodes of this show he names Dimes, which is basically an excuse for him to interview attractive women, objectifying them on the internet in hopes that he can get himself laid. The whole thing is very sleazy. Hi. Hey. Mwah. How are you? Great. How are you? Good. Thank you. So, uh, did you think about what I asked you? Kind of hot out. Come on. When are you going to let me eat that box? Okay, I guess. Mm. Oh. How's my box taste? It's great, I just popped the cherry. <laughs> Thanks so much for doing the show, we're really appreciative. Well, you know, I almost wasn't gonna do it after you sent me that wiener pic. It's like, hey sexy lady. Want some exposure on my channel? All it'll cost you is a good dicking and your dignity. You can kind of imagine what he does when he's not recording these videos. I bet he goes on Craigslist or something and like scrolls through all these different models and he finds the ones that he thinks are attractive in his area and he contacts them and he's like, Hey, do you want some exposure? I have a YouTube channel and I have a show called Dimes. One thing I'm not going to tell you is that throughout this entire process, I'm gonna be a fucking creep. Basically the entire point. And so I can fuck you. He also uploads short films on his channel. One of which is named What Brews Inside. And it's a movie trailer for, uh, this. He thought he was alone, but he had no idea what was brewing inside him. <laughs> Shithead. He made another video named Venom Movie Superhero Deathmatch, wherein Jeff and his friend dress up like Marvel's Venom and Hulk in these really cheap superhero eye party costumes and they fight in a kid's playground. These are two grown ass men. <laughs> ah! He has another video named Superman Got Dumped starring Jeff Ward. As if putting his name in the title would help get him more views or something. What is this, an Ali A video? In this video, Jeff is dressed up as Superman and he acts drunk in a bar. Probably the same bar that he goes to to find girls for his dimes show. But I thought I might give you a little head. Sure. Um, I just heard you like- He steals this guy away that was flirting with Lois Lane and brings him to Ecuador? And then this dude shoots Superman with a kryptonite bullet that he very conveniently just happened to have in his possession. Superman asks why the guy shot him, and this is what he says. Why? You look like an asshole. Look at you. you look like a fag. Red tights? Who does that? Come on, man. So then, uh, Superman dies. And then it ends. I think I found the Baywatch version of Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> he then uploaded a video leading to the creation of the movie Swamp Ape called The Adventures of Swamp Ape. It's a four minute video of Swamp Ape being a dickhead. He scares someone off in the middle of taking a piss. He pushes a woman off of her kayak. And then he hides away in the back of some random guy's truck. This is top tier storytelling. <laughs> in 2017, he decided it was time to finally create a full length feature film of his own. Even though he ended up uploading the movie in its entirety to his YouTube channel. The movie opens with this incredibly cheesy curtain draw. It reveals Jeff Ward's face on a lion with the name Super Holly Ward beneath it. But it transitions so fast you hardly have enough time to read what it says before it uses this terrible burning effect to reveal the name of his indie movie business, Hollywood Entertainment. His branding leaves much to be desired. Unless he's making it cheesy on purpose, which he might very well be doing. This movie comes across as like a cheesy, corny version of like a scary movie. And if he was going for that, then cool. But honestly, if he wasn't, and he was seriously trying his hardest to make like a scary movie and just failed miserably, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised either. Who knows? Maybe he saw the success of The Room and tried to piggyback off of the so bad that it's good trend. Oh, hi, Mark. The movie starts with this redneck and this ginger guy. I'm just gonna call him a ginger neck. So the redneck and the ginger neck are walking in the woods with their dog. 
The redneck is holding a BB gun, and the ginger neck has a fake dead chicken strapped to his belt. Some shots have this like airy background noise, you know, like they didn't know which mic to use, or you know, they probably didn't use a mic at all. <laughs> How can you expect someone like Jeff Ward to come prepared to make a movie? He probably shot it on an iPhone. <laughs> Obviously, the amateur nature of this film makes itself apparent very early on, but don't let that sway you. This movie, it gets pretty entertaining, you'll see. <laughs> Some weird stuff happens. So they pan towards a sign that tells us that they're traveling into private property and that hunting is strictly forbidden. Ginger Neck has a dead alligator tail sticking out of the sack on his back. Clearly one of those plastic beach toys that you get at Walmart for like $12.99. <laughs> then the dog starts barking and runs off. Uh, somehow it was able to tear the leash in half by just pulling on it. Ah yes, I should have known Rex the Wonder Dog would make an appearance in this movie. Yes, we're all about those obscure DC Comics references on the Elvis the Alien channel. I mean, clearly these guys are just as surprised as I am. <laughs> If it were my dog, I'd probably get it put down before it jumps on me and licks the skin right off of my face. So the dog runs off into a lake and gets attacked by the swamp ape. The screen goes comically red while Ginger Neck and the Redneck start shooting their BB guns at the water. Thank God they're just BB guns because if their dog is being attacked, you'd probably only increase its chance of death, but okay. I guess they just didn't think to shoot up in the air to potentially scare away the monster. I love the redneck's face in this scene. He goes through an entire cycle of emotion. From concern to needing to take a shit, to feeling his back pain kick in again. Gingerneck pulls Rex the Wonder Dog to shore. They edit in this shadow that creeps in from the entire left side of the screen. The redneck turns around and screams at the looming shadow. Ginger Neck looks up, the swamp ape squirts him in the face with a ketchup bottle, and then kills him. Presumably because his scream is too obnoxious to bear. I mean, that's why I would kill him if I were this guy dressed up in a Bigfoot costume. Then we get the title screen. Swamp ape. Very cool, guys. Super cool. Then we get this totally tubular scene of these three kids playing volleyball. I particularly like this guy's incredible line delivery. Damn, that was a nice fight. I think you're ready for this weekend. Thanks, man. I think you're right. He's playing volleyball, but when he delivers his line, he doesn't sound winded at all. This dude's voice sounds so low, he sounds like he's Judge Dredd. I mean, nothing against him. That's obviously just his natural voice, but it's just weird. <laughs> Damn, that was a nice fight. In some of these scenes, they used ADR, but it didn't really work all that well because all the rest of the audio is super airy because they didn't record it with a good mic. So when you put in ADR, it just kind of comes across awkward. I gotta go. I'm sorry, guys. Damn, that was a nice fight. So Dennis Nedry's long lost brother here is a chemistry teacher. And he tells his failing student, Ron Weasley, that if he wants to pass the semester, he has to accompany him on this expedition. I can't this weekend, it's volleyball finals. If you want to graduate, consider yourself a volunteer. Ron begrudgingly accepts, and we get this scene of all these students piling into Professor Nedry's creepy rapist van. Here we have our first scene with our man, Jeff. Everybody put your hands together for the entrance of Jeff. And of course, within a few seconds of him being here, we get a nip slip. Then they decide to use heavy guitar riffs as a background music for people just packing their shit into a van. Okay. <laughs> Then we get the scene of everyone in the bus and they start bickering about cupcakes. As far as characters, we've got Thoughts 1 and 2, the beefcake retard, the fat girl, the hipster kid, and the normie. The fat girl in the back hogs all the cupcakes, you know, because she's fat. Where are the cupcakes? When he's got them. Dibs. <laughs> I love how Jeff's first couple lines in this movie are so fitting with his overall character in real life. Professor Stein, what's your first name? Richard. So your name's Dick. <laughs> he shows Ron his condoms and tells him he has dibs on Anne Marie. What, so you're gonna fuck this girl on a school expedition? When? Where? In the bathroom? And then he gives a penis pump to the girl Lily, who's sitting next to him, and tells her it's a bong. So she'll suck on it. And I just like, it's greasy. Sure. 
I mean, given what we already know about Jeff, none of this comes as much of a surprise. I can almost guarantee that Jeff tried to bang every one of the girls in this movie offset. Well, you know, all of them aside from the fat one, because she's not a dime, so to speak. Then there's this random clip of roadkill spliced in there for some reason. They stop at this gift shop. This is probably where they purchase the fake alligator and chicken from the beginning of the movie. There's a scene of the fat girl gathering a bunch of snacks, you know, because she's fat. And that's pretty much her only character trait throughout the entire movie. You'll see. It happens like, what, like 12 more times? Just her talking about food and eating and just, you know, talking about how she's fat and Hey guys, look, I'm fat. I like food. I'm, I'm just gonna eat because I'm fat. Hey Jeff, there's more to this girl than just her weight. I'm not sure if you knew this. Thought number one appropriately asks thought number two, who she thinks is cute enough to get dicked by in the group. I don't know. Troy's cute, but he's a Kendall and I... <laughs> Then these three guys take a gander at a Swamp Ape action figure. I feel bad for whoever was acting the Ron Weasley character because he's like the only competent actor in the bunch. But hey, everyone's gotta eat. <laughs> and somehow this hipster kid knows the history of the Swamp Ape. It's a, a Bigfoot. Hey, it's a skunk ape. I mean, these things have been around for centuries, long before the Native Americans were even here. Okay. <laughs> Is that what you do in your free time? Just look up stuff about a swamp ape? Then Jeff cuts in with this amazing line. You need to get laid, Urkel. No, you sound like a dork. Right oh, man. Professor Nedry walks up to the counter, and the back and forth between the cashier and Nedry is so unnatural, it's hilarious. I hope you don't plan on camping around here this weekend. Yes, we're here for the pollution study. That is important work. But there is no camping this weekend. All the local tribes gather for the blood moon ceremonies. So the reservations are off limits. My name is Richard limits. Stein. The professor gets heated so fast. My Bacons name are is Richard limits. Stein. And this piece of paper- He's just pissed throughout the entire movie because of how sweaty he is, poor guy. Pretty much, he's sweating to death throughout the entire movie. As you can see, that says state property. Come minions. Come minions. <laughs> Your teacher's kind of a dick. Pretty yeah, much. Agreed. Then we get this scene of the gang meeting Ranger Steve. This sequence is so hard to watch. The shadows are so dark. Look at his pants. They look like crumpled up tin foil. It almost looks like a comic book. Then the three girls talk about how they would all like to have sex with Ranger Steve. Because the only things that matter in this movie is, uh, sex? Um, I would let him patrol my wetland. Right? I'd let him explore my marsh. Food for the fat girl. I packed lunch for everybody. Sandwiches. You got turkey? Of course. All right, great. And s Swamp Ape. Ah! The lighting in this scene is impeccable. His face is only 100% covered in shadow. Everybody load your gear on the boat. We're getting ready to get out. He was going to say we're getting ready to go, but then slipped up at the last second. Why not just reshoot? Then again, it does seem like most scenes are just one take. What the hell is up with Ranger Steve scenes? They all look and sound like complete shit. I'm gonna be at the station all weekend. Well, most scenes in this movie do, but his scenes are far worse. It's like they went from recording with a Canon 80D to an iPhone 5S. <laughs> How do you manage to shoot a scene and have it look so bad that the real background looks like a terrible green screen? I have no idea. <laughs> Then we get this epic scene of them riding on the boat. I love the music. Oh, well, here we are. Boys cabin on the left, girls on the right. They arrive at the campsite and everyone is looking great with a nice sheen of sweat. Especially the teacher. <laughs> Where did they find this guy? He looks more like a Guido than a teacher. He's even got that gangster necklace. You know what? He kind of looks and sounds like an older version of Nikki from the movie Casino. Are you out of your mind? Look what you did to this fucking guy! <gasps> of course they have the fat chick eating in practically every scene that she's in. We get it, movie. She's the fat one. Then we get a couple of shots of the gang walking to the campground. Boys, I want you to gather some firewood when you're done setting up so we can have a fire tonight. All right. I'll be at the boathouse down by the docks. This is the last time I'll mention it, I swear. 
but the background noise is so bad. You can tell they use the camera's built-in mic for like 90% of these shots. Just listen to this shit. It sounds like there was a plane going overhead, but Jeff decided to do everything in one take. So just, nah, it's fine. Next scene, next scene, move on. Why not put some more of that epic rock music in? It worked so well before when people were packing their shit into a van. Then Jeff says this beautiful line of dialogue. Yeah. Hey, that guy Theo smells like Theo. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. You get it because the name Theo it rhymes with. This movie is trash. Then the guy, Theo, who we haven't even been introduced to yet, says, well, one of us has to share a bunk, no homo. One of us gotta share a bunk, no homo. The script actually has the phrase, no homo in it. If there even is a script, I feel like most of this movie, they just kind of winged it. Jeff probably drew up a bunch of sketches of scenes on a handful of napkins with crayon and decided that, that was enough to make the movie with. Carl said he already wanted to share a bunk with me. But yes, if you want to share a bunk with him? Yeah, I mean, what are you guys gay? What are you guys gay? No, I just called dibs. Because you know those gays, those people are yucky. Then we have this scene of Jeff trying to have sex with the hipster kid. He even ripped his beanie off in a burst of passion. Calm down, you don't want to find yourself sitting in a room full of energy. In an attempt to break up the sex, Ron Weasley mounts Jeff. Hey, 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 hey. Then Theo gets a look at the three gay stooges and runs away. No homo. Once Jeff leaves, the hipster finds Jeff's toothbrush and then he runs it up and down his ass crack in revenge. As if Jeff wasn't gonna eat his ass anyway. Today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 visual effects you thought were real. Uh, you touched my hand, gross. gross. They go down to the edge of the lake and Jeff tells the ladies they could definitely use a tan, even though one of them is black and the other is presumably Latina. Besides, it's hot as balls. You ladies could use a tan. It was basically just an excuse to get them to take their clothes off, but not the fat chick, because she's fat. Fat people are gross. Don't want the fat people tanning. We don't want to see that. I'm gonna go align my chakras. So Jeff and Ron go swimming. These two girls start tanning. Hipster records them like a fucking weirdo. <laughs> I like to eat food, not be food. <laughs> oh my God. We get it, movie. Jeff, we understand. We have eyeballs. We can see. She's a little bit overweight. God damn it. Give her something else to say other than food. I'm, I'm fat, food, fat. Then Jeff harasses the girls before picking up the hipster. He cups his butthole as he carries him down to the lake. This is getting a little bit too sensual for me. Jeff throws him into the lake. Then the hipster starts flailing around because he can't swim. I can't get low. When Jeff threw him into shallow water, then something pulls the hipster under the water. Okay. How? Then Ron and Jeff get into a tizzy and start wrestling. No homo. Hey, you're gonna kill him. Hey, don't fucking touch me, Twink. Yeah, it doesn't seem to stop you. Hey, I told him not to touch me. You're slithering. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! Hey, what the hell's going on here? Y'all had a task to do. As punishment, Jeff has to collect firewood, but it's dangerous to go alone. You want me to go out and collect firewood? when there's panthers and bears out there all by myself. So he's gotta take a butt buddy. Obviously, it's Ron. Jeff leaves Ron alone so Ron can collect his thoughts. Then he gets chased by his suppressed sexuality back to the group. The teacher then says this. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You better not be high on dope. You better not be high on dope. I think the professor is my favorite character. He's such a dickhead. Professor, take a look at this. It's a sample. Then we get this scene of all of them gathered around a fire as Theo tells the story about the swamp ape. Have you ever seen one? Yeah. Once, when I was six. Just once. Sometimes, when I'm out here in the woods alone, rubbing one out, I can still see its eyes. You know, sometimes when I'm alone in the woods rubbing one out. Oh my fucking God. Can this movie go like, what, 10 seconds without mentioning something about sex or masturbation or gay or fucking? I feel like a kid from middle school made this movie. They're like, oh, it's boobies. <laughs> boobies gay. <laughs> no homo. You got turkey? Oh, fat girl. 
That girl is fat. You guys hear that? Stop. Ugh. I'm serious. I hear something. God. Oh my god. Then obviously, you know, Jeff farts. <laughs> and the scene ends because farts are funny. They walk back to the cabin and Theo tells the guys that he'll see them in the morning. All right, well, see you bright and early tomorrow. The guys decide to scare the girls at night and no one stops them for whatever reason. Not even Theo, who just obviously noticed that they ran off to do this when he knows that there's a swamp ape out there. Why would he do that? Let's go scare them. Yeah. So the guys go to the girls' cabin and they pull an animal house, staring at them like it's the first girls they've ever seen take their clothes off. <gasps> Ooh, like, uh, porn doesn't exist, guys. Whoa. Are they gonna get naked or what? And then the fat girl walks in front of the window. What the fuck, fat girl? Ah! Oh, your fat is ruining the day once again. You're so fat! Ah! Oh, oh, so then they start scaring the girls. Whatever. The next day, they start on their hike. You guys are late. Now listen up, we got work to do. Theo tells the blonde chick to leave their lunch in the middle of the forest for when they come back. Which is very weird. Why not leave it in the cabin where nothing could get into it like a raccoon or something? So why do they leave it there? So the swamp babe can take it, obviously. Hey, how long has this been here? About a month. I leave food out here all the time. I guess you guys found out about my research study. Theo shows the group footage that he caught of the swamp ape, which is very strange. Why would you want to scare them half to death? Any normal person after seeing that shit would want to leave. Either that or they wouldn't believe it. They hear something move, so Theo screams, Let's go! Let's get it! Come on, let's go get it! Go. What? And they all chase after it, because that's a smart decision. In the next scene, they notice their lunches are gone, so obviously, Wendy whines about not getting her sandwich. Oh. I was really looking forward to that sandwich! Fuck me. Then Titties says this. All right, does anyone have any food they could share? Wendy does, she always has food. No, I don't, Anna. God damn it. The whole fat girl likes food thing gets so tired so fast. In the next scene, she leaves the group to start eating junk food in the forest alone. We're missing somebody. Who is it? Wendy. Well, Did where the hell is she? Theo calls in to base camp about their missing student, and the professor proves once again why he's the best character in the movie. Steve, one of our students went missing. We last saw her on the Northern Trail. Description? Yeah, she's college age, African American, and, uh... Thick! Yeah. Thick. I gotta give it to the movie. They actually pulled off a fat girl joke that I thought was funny. I bet you anything that later on in the movie, they're gonna say something about, how could you not find her? She's so fat. Missing, how could you miss her? Right. Jeff and Titties go looking for Wendy. Uh, that's the fat girl. Then we finally arrive at the purpose of this movie. This scene where Jeff gets to make out with the hot girl. You know Wendy's by the camp. It's just me and you out here. He, he finds a way, ladies and gentlemen. He always finds a way. Bravo, Jeff Ward. I was born in Moscow, but... We get another scene of Wendy eating, because of course. Mm. She is then approached by the swamp ape. She backs away, and the monster starts going through her bag of goodies. But she ain't having that shit, because she's fat. And that her food. And ain't no furry monster coming between fat Wendy and her snacks. Why is this shot with the swamp ape so dark? To make him stand out more? Well, I gotta say, it's an impressive costume for such a low budget movie. They must have spent at least $200 on it. Wendy punches the swamp ape because, uh, she's hungry, I guess. <laughs> so it swipes her head clean off of her body. <laughs> and woohoo. We're back to the incredibly awkward scene between Jeff and Titties. <sighs> you know you can just pay for sex, Jeff. You know this, right? There's people called escorts out there, and it'd probably be much easier to get sex from them than making an entire movie to have sex with a girl. Maybe he's in love with her. Maybe that's why. Maybe she, like, denied him or something, and he's like, maybe if I promise her a role in my movie, that makes her make out with me, she can't say no. What? No, nothing. What is it? 
I just thought there was more. Oh. So the swamp ape creeps up on them. They notice it's standing there and freak out. Oh, shit! Look at Jeff's face. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so done. You can tell just by looking at him, nothing's going on up here. Just like an empty shell. <laughs> and then the chase begins. Oh, you're looking good in them whitey tidies, Jeff. Once they're far enough away, Titties and Jeff hide in a bush. They find Wendy's head laying there and freak out. <laughs> I love the Keaton flies. They look so real. Then the swamp ape sneaks up on them. Uh, Jeff freaks out and throws Wendy's head at him. The chase continues, but then Titties gets stuck in some quicksand, but her entire body sings in like a matter of seven seconds. I shit you not, just like, holy fuck. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, Max. <laughs> then we get a scene of, what's his name again? Ranger Steve? He was gone for so long, I forgot he existed. Yeah, he's on the boat looking for Wendy, I guess. Instead, he plays peekaboo with the swamp ape. He fires at it with his BB gun. It flips his boat. Then Ranger Steve gets killed by a plastic crocodile. Shit! Probably the same one that the ginger neck had in his backpack in the beginning. In the next scene, Jeff tries to dig titties out of the mud. <laughs> and then our Lord and Savior, Professor Guido, finds Ranger Steve's corpse and picks up his BB gun. Emergency! Emergency! Help! Ranger Steve is down! Then he reunites with Jeff. That's me! Where were you? Where's Wendy? The, the thing killed her and... Uh, what thing? Uh, but then leaves him laying there right after he finds him. Then we get a scene of the rest of the gang near the cabin with the swamp ape staring them down. The hipster randomly has like a chain, so he uses it to lasso the ape's arm but the ape is so fucking strong that he just rips, <laughs> he just rips the hipster's arm right out of its socket. Like, ah! I love how his arm is so clearly in the sleeve still. <laughs> like they didn't even try to make it look real. At least it's funny. The professor shows up, but he doesn't know how to use the rifle. So Theo takes it and uses it to shoot at the swamp ape. Give me that. Who am I? I want that to fight. It even sounds like a BB gun. Like, how hard is it to find a gun sound effect? Here, I'll do it right now. <laughs> Much better. Now everyone is yelling at each other as the blonde chick tries to cry in the background. I didn't think this was gonna happen until the- You know what? You knew that thing was out there. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't know for sure. Anna Marie's dead. The fucking thing killed her. I like how Jeff points in the direction of the swamp ape when he just arrived at the scene. When the swamp ape is gone. How did he know that it was in that direction? I guess that's way too nitpicky for a movie like this. You know, of a movie of this caliber, I should not be <laughs> complaining about that shit. Then the professor tells Theo that Ranger Steve's body washed up on the beach. By the way, <laughs> Ranger Steve is dead too. Theo's just like, well, damn, dude. It's not my fault. <laughs> like, did you give a shit about this guy at all? You were co-workers, weren't you? It's another, he's just a human being, fuck him. Like, he doesn't look or sound shocked at all. His body washed up on the beach earlier. <laughs> That's not my fucking fault. They're all ignoring the hipster kid who just had his arm ripped off. Why isn't he crying out for help? We're gonna have to leave Carl. <laughs> what? Just go, guys. Just go. Just hide me in the cabin or something, all right? I'm only gonna slow you down. Yes, very convincing. Those squinty eyes sold me on his gut-wrenching pain. The guys help him into the cabin, and the blonde girl feeds him Cheetos. <laughs> what the fuck is this movie? I think you're very, very brave for staying here, Carl. I'm brave as, as long as you come back. Okay. Man, these are good. In the next scene, the rest of the gang is walking in the dark. Then the swamp ape comes out of nowhere and steals the blonde girl away. It just picks her up like a knapsack and runs off. Then we find out that Titty somehow dug her way out of the quicksand and is now in the swamp ape cage. I'm guessing the swamp ape dug her out and put her in there. Okay, and she's not really dirty. It's very strange. Okay, yeah, so the swamp ape puts the blonde girl in the cage too. So he's got a thought collection going. Oh Titties blames the blonde girl for all of this because she's on her 
Period. Is he gonna fucking eat us? Is it all your fault? Cause you have your fucking period! It's not my fault, Henry! The guys start deliberating about their next steps. Jeff is as brilliant as ever with his lines. When we keep making our way off the island, if we can't find Lily, the authorities will find her. That's their job. Hey, screw it? you, man! We're not hey, leaving your water! Hey. hey, save it, man. Cause we're gonna kill that mother freaking monkey fucker! <laughs> Great line. Superb. Then the swamp ape force feeds these girls raw fish. So basically the swamp ape fingers Anne Marie, that's the titty girl. He brings his fingers up to his face and it's covered in blood. And he licks it? Like, is this scene necessary? Is it really necessary? But then there's this very awkward boner scene. I don't think I can show it. But the swamp ape gets a huge red rocket doggy boner. They even show it coming out of its like foreskin flesh sack thing. So fucking gross. It looks exactly like a foot long hot dog that you would buy at like a baseball game. The swamp ape carries titties away and leaves the blonde chick with the cage open. The guys find the blonde chick almost immediately after the swamp ape leaves. How convenient. As the swamp ape is about to rape Anne Marie, she scratches his face. He gets pissed and beats her face until she dies. All they did was cover her face in fake blood when realistically her face would be destroyed. The swamp ape then approaches the professor and bends his BB gun. The professor punches the swamp ape, so the swamp ape just rips out the professor's spine. As effortlessly as you can imagine. Just plop, here's your spine. <laughs> just like pulls it out like it was just sitting there and he's like, mine now. Captain Underpants finds titties laying there dead. He gets upset. Kinda, you know, as upset as Jeff can conjure up with his shitty acting skills. So when he comes across the swamp ape, who starts jumping up and down with joy, his big cock wiggles with every hop, it's very disturbing, it's very strange. Jeff uses the spray can and lighter method to push the swamp ape back into its cage. Jeff gets closed in with the swamp ape, so Ron screams as he's forced to leave his gay crush behind. No homo. The swamp ape breaks Jeff's leg and throws him up into the bar, snapping his neck. <laughs> He then just breaks out of the cage like it's made out of cardboard. Then the screen turns red, probably symbolism for his boner. The last three remaining survivors find a boat on the beach. Ron now decides to run back and get Carl. You know, the hipster kid who's missing an arm, who is likely dead at this point, whatever. Try and get him anyway. Let's risk our lives with the kid who's clearly dead, who no one gave a shit about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> The swamp ape kills the hipster kid. Ron runs away. They try to get away in the boat, but the swamp ape kills Theo. You know the swamp ape. He's a pretty good swimmer. He's got pretty good form. <laughs> Look at how he effortlessly just swan dives. The swamp ape picks up the blonde girl, but then a crocodile bites the swamp ape's cock. Part of me? loves this movie. So the blonde girl's able to escape because the swamp ape got his cock chomped on. I'm starting just to feel bad for the swamp ape at this point. He just wanted to get laid, just like everyone else in this movie. And it looks like he got the opposite of that, just like everyone else. This is where me and Anna Marie, we were gonna... So the blonde girl's able to escape with Ron. They get into his car. The swamp ape charges into it like a linebacker. I think we made it. Pulls out Ron, drags his ass all the way back to the fucking beach and starts squeezing his head like he's trying to pop it open like a coconut. But then, he gets saved at the last second by a shadowy figure. Who could it be? Who's that Pokemon? Oh, that uh, cashier guy. From the souvenir shop. Cool. Like he had any significance in this movie. He also might be the worst actor on planet Earth. Just watch this scene play out. You saved our lives. I did. Okay. I warned you of the danger and you paid me no heed. Now look what happened. It wasn't our fault, we... Of course it was your fault. And this youngling doesn't need to speak to let me know that you have physically assaulted him as well. It sounds so unnatural. Although I don't know if it's even possible to make those lines sound good. It was only a matter of time before his sneakiness destroyed everything. Then this is how the movie ends. <laughs> yep, 
the Swamp Ape stands up in the boat. You think he's gonna attack the guy, but instead he just kind of collapses into the water. Can't really blame him. He's got his cock chomped on by a crocodile who likely spun afterwards. Ah, uh, I'd be a little bit worn out too, to be honest. I gotta say this. For a shitty homemade comedy horror flick, this thing has a lot of entertainment value. Not bad at all. Even if the only reason you made this movie was to show off your epic body and make out with a big titted topless girl, not bad. That's gonna do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please make sure to like it. Um, if you like what I do on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon, and I'll list your name at the end of every video. Head on over to AlienClothing.com for some awesome merch like this. Who knows, maybe I'll make a Swamp Ape design sometime in the future. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. And if you're watching this, Jeff Ward, no offense, bro. I liked the movie. It was pretty entertaining. No homo. <laughs>